Hi everyone, Aiden here with eTrailer. Today we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install this Curt T-Connector vehicle wiring harness on our 2022 Ford Maverick. This kit is going to give you four pole wiring at the back of your vehicle. This will give us functions for our turn signals, both right and left, brake lights and running lights for our trailers whenever we're going down the road. This does come with a dust cap to cover it up when it's not in use, but it does not include the bracket. However you choose to mount it is really up to you, but you can get brackets like this here at eTrailer if you do want to mount it up this way. And if your Ford Maverick doesn't have the towing package, your towing capacity is going to be a little bit lower than the ones that do have it. So chances are you're probably not going to be towing anything super heavy and your trailer probably doesn't have its own brakes. That's where a four pole wiring system like this is great because all you need are those lighting functions to let people know what we're doing when we're going down the road. The nice thing about this kit is that everything is plug and play. There are a few connections we need to make, but nothing on the actual taillights themselves. All those pieces are completely plug and play, so it makes it really straightforward. Let's check out that process now. Starting the installation off on the driver's side, you'll open your tailgate and locate two screws located on the inside. These are the ones that have the Phillips head slot on the inside. Use an eight millimeter socket to remove those. With both of those out, you can kind of get your hand on the inside of the tail light here and pull out at a 45 degree angle. There's gonna be two tabs at the back end that will come unhoused. And then we can make a disconnection right here and set this aside. After you've completed that on the other side, you can grab a piece of airline tubing, wiring, a coat hanger, whatever you need to use to reverse fish wire down through this bottom hole and you'll see it pop out underneath the vehicle. In person, you can just look right down through and see the ground. Might be a little hard to see on camera, but what we'll do is we will tape the end of our custom connector with the yellow wire to the end of this and pull it up through so we can connect it up top. Once this is wrapped up, we can start to feed it back up to our spot where we had our tail light. Then once all of these connectors are up here, you can connect this to the vehicle end. And whenever we reinstall the headlight housing, this will go to that. So with these all connected, I'm just gonna push the wires back in there, reinstall the tail light housing, put our screws back in, and then route our green wire over to the passenger side. So our box isn't fully mounted yet, but where it'll live is just up here in this cavity. And from there, our green wire is running down and away from the exhaust as far as I can get it. We'll probably wrap some wire loom around this. And it goes up high and away from any moving parts behind the bumper, up above our spare tire, pretty much along where the hitch goes until we get over to the other side of the spare tire where we fed it through this small gap right here and out behind the hitch. Right here is just temporary. I'm intending to have my fish wire come back through here and then I can feed this back up through this hole and up into the cavity where it needs to make our connections. Running the fish wire and making our connections on the passenger side is the exact same as it was on the drivers. I've just got all the excess green wire tied together and tucked up nice and high and then we can get this tail light reinstalled. With all the tail light connections made, we want to mount up this black converter box. I've got double-sided tape on the back of it. I'm going to peel off the other side and just go ahead and put it as high up here as I can reach with the wire that I've got and just mount it firmly in place in this cavity, high away from the exhaust. For the ground, we need to find a good place to mount it. Everything under here is pretty painted, so we're gonna actually go to the inside of the frame rail, right up here to our factory ground. Now, right out of the box, your kit's not gonna be long enough to reach, so what I'm gonna do is actually cut off the end with the ring terminal, and I'm going to extend it with some more white wire. So just cut the ring terminal off 
strip back the end. And then we can attach a heat shrink butt connector. We're just gonna slide that onto the end and crimp it down. Once we have it, just give it a tug to make sure that everything's secure and we can grab our extension wire and do the same thing. Now I'm purposely going to keep this wire long until we get to that factory ground so I can route it properly away from this exhaust. Then we can trim it up once we know how long it needs to be. From our black box, we ran the ground wire straight up and you can see where it pops out right here. There's a small hole between the sheet metal that pops out right here. You can see where our splice was with that heat shrink connector and it runs into the frame nearby. From there, if you move back the frame, there's a large hole right near the tire where it popped out. I just kept feeding it in and pulled it out with a pair of needle nose pliers once I saw it. From there, it runs straight up, following some existing wiring, leading all the way to our factory ground. I've already cut and added a new ring terminal, so now all we need to do is just add it to that ground. So you can just remove that ground. Make sure we grab that bolt, add our ring terminal on, and then we can run it back down. For the four pole wiring, that we wrapped up in some wire loom along with that green wire we routed earlier. It comes straight down following the same path as the green wire all the way until you get right next to the hitch. You can see our excess is all tied up and it leads to this bracket. The bracket doesn't come with your kit. You can pick it up here at e-trailer. I chose to mount it just with some self-tapping screws into this piece right up here above the hitch. So now I've got easy access for it right here. There are no drill bracket options if you would prefer to do it that way. This is just the way that I chose to do it for my truck. And now everything looks clean. If you are going to use this cap, remember to put that on before you feed this through the bracket because it is difficult to get back out. Now, all we have to do is route our power wire all the way up to the front of our vehicle. For our black power wire, we're gonna start by crimping on a butt connector to the end. Your kit does come with some, but I'm going to be using heat shrink just because that is a more watertight connection. Same way we extended that ground wire earlier, making sure that connection's good. And then your kit does come with a good length of black wire to extend this all the way up to the front. We're gonna route ours and show you where we went after the fact, but as a general rule of thumb, avoid any hot or moving parts. For running the power wire, things are a bit cramped in certain places, but we found a pretty nice spot to run it, starting with our box. So we mounted that right up there and the power wire follows the white one up through that gap following the path of the white wire, but into this other hole in the frame, then exiting in the exact same spot right over here. From that exit point, it goes straight up to this gap right here, and then out through this hole right here, where it gets zip tied up along some existing wiring and going back towards the front of the vehicle. Here's a spot where things get pretty cramped. This is where the wire exits down, but I just kept it really high up away from all of these moving parts and zip tied it up where I could to make sure it didn't fall down. From there, it just follows these existing lines to this underbody panel. For the underbody panel, it pretty much just runs the whole length the rest of the way. You will need access to it though. I did remove these two screws here to flex the end of this panel down and just reach my arm in, pull it through. And then for the second panel here, there's going to be three of these nuts here, here, and towards the front. That let me flex this whole side of the panel down, running the wire up all along there and kind of cutting diagonal where it exits out towards the front right here. Now, at this point, we are pretty close to the exhaust and we're not gonna actually be running up through the middle it's really hard to see and you probably won't be able to see it on camera, but there is a gap straight up through right on the outside of the heat shield 
where I can see a little bit of the light above where our hood is open and it should lead right to our battery. So we're going to use the same technique we used at the tail lights to actually get the wire up into the engine bay. The spot we're looking for is directly to the left of the battery. And if you look down in that cavity, probably not going to be able to see it on camera, but there is going to be a white plastic piece near the bottom that's right next to the heat shield. That's right around where our gap should be to feed this pole wire down through. Then we can attach it to the wiring and pull it back up. With everything popping out through the bottom, we can tape our power wire to the pole wire. And then we can go back up into the engine bay and pull it up. One helpful tip is to, once you have this routed down, tape it up top so it doesn't fall down through. So now we can return to the top and pull it up. And then I'm just gonna carefully pull this up. I don't wanna pull too hard because I don't want this to come untaped. But once it's up here, we can pull all of the excess wire up. And I'm gonna find a place to zip tie this just to secure it, maybe to a plastic clip or something around here. But just to make sure it doesn't fall back down, then we can start making our connections to the battery. We've got our power wire zip tied right here to this plastic panel. And the next step is to connect it to the positive terminal on our battery. So I'm just gonna lift this cover up and we're gonna go for right here. We do need to connect our fuse first. So kind of looking at the estimated length we need to have. So we will make our cut for our power wire. And just like we've been doing, we'll strip back the end of that wire. We can connect one of our heat shrink butt connectors that we picked up. Twisting the ends of the wire to make sure that they stay right where we want them. Then once that's in place, we can crimp it down. Test that connection, and then repeat the same process for the connection on our fuse holder. And after we've verified those connections are good, since we are reusing heat shrink, I'll come back through and use a heat gun to shrink these down. But first, I'm going to attach our ring terminal to the other end of our fuse holder. The ring terminal does come in your kit. And then we can come back and attach that to the battery post. Using our 10 millimeter wrench or socket, we can undo the nut on top. Place our ring terminal over top of that and reinstall the nut. I'm going to try to keep the ring terminal kind of coming out towards the outside of the vehicle so that the cover fits back on nice and flush. Right about there is looking pretty good. Then we can pop the cover back on. And don't forget to shrink up that butt connector if you did choose to use one. With all of our connections made, we can go back through and tighten up any loose wires that we may have left undone. We zip tied as we went, so now the last thing we need is the fuse. Just install that in the fuse holder. So we can push that in place and cover it up with the cap. All that's left to do now is test our lights. So we can check our running lights, our brake lights, our left turn, and our right turn. We can see with our tester plugged into our four pole that all of those functions are displaying as well as showing on our tail lights. And overall, that installation process was really easy. Everything's plug and play in the taillights. The taillights themselves are very easy to remove and get to, so you've got tons of room to work. Really, the only tricky thing is just running your wires, finding a place to ground and run your power. But once you do find that route to get up to your battery, it's really easy and you're good to go. 
But that'll do it for our look at and installation of this Curt T-Connector vehicle wiring harness on our 2022 Ford Maverick. Thanks for watching.